Hello again and welcome. Michael Pizzola here. I'd like to welcome you to this edition of the Value Capping Rant. This is the 2021 Breeders' Cup edition and I'm delighted you could spend this time with me. As many of you know, the 2021 Breeders' Cup is being held this weekend at Del Mar, November 5th and 6th, 2021. Um, spoiler alert, and for those of you just looking for, you know, who does this guy like and looking at different videos and all, for the second time in as many years, the same thing happened last year, the Breeders' Cup has presented us with a number of races that have either obvious short-priced horses on top, and when I say on top, I'll explain to you, I'm using a software program called Value Capper, uh, or races filled with unknowns. Uh, so we'll look at the races themselves, we'll look at the odds lines that I'm using, and um, I'll take you over my shoulder as I've looked in the races, because there are, I don't know, a dozen plus races to look at. I'm not gonna take you into the intricacies. I've taken snapshots of what I look at uh, with the software that I use to tell whether there's going to there's a value bet or not. Um, a quick introduction for those of you who don't know me. Uh, my name is Michael Pizzola. I've been uh, teaching, writing about, and uh, involved in this game, and also in the trenches playing this game for over 30 years. I am the author of the best-selling uh, handicapping book, Handicapping Magic, co-author of the classic Pace Makes the Race. I'm the creator of the original online racing form. Uh, you can find out about it at posttimedaily.com. Cleverly, it's called Post Time Daily 2.0 now. Uh, it's what it looks like. It's customizable and so forth. I am also the uh, creator of the uh, value Capper software, Blackmagic Handicapper 2.0, um, and something called value capping. If you want to find out about value capping, go to valuecapper.com. There's a, four, a free four video series. You get them every couple of days in your email, you know, you know, that kind of thing. And yes, at the end, the fourth thing talks about how to get the software and all of that. But honestly, don't care. I don't care because it's not for everyone. However, the first couple of videos talking about the principles of value capping, I think you'll find really interesting. And if you don't know about value capping, it'll turn your game around. It's the value capping framework. And, and then the second one's about how it's different than handicapping. Whether you want to deal with software or whether you're not the, you know, a lot of people say, look, I, 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 I'm happy handicapping the way I do, but these principles of value capping will stand you in good stead. And you know, when I was thinking about it, Here's what I do. Here's why I do these things. I help horse players and handicappers, some of whom, by the way, are owners and trainers, some of whom are owners and trainers in this year's Breeders' Cup. I help them succeed in the modern game by overcoming their overwhelm and confusion and adopting a value-oriented approach. You know, there's so much information. And if you clickety click around the internet, you can get an opinion on every horse at every one of the Breeders' Cup race. But that doesn't help the bottom line. Okay. Now, unlike others who are concerned with predicting a particular race, I teach players to find value bets. In other words, overlays. Betting if there's value, passing if there isn't, and, and developing a stress-free investment strategy. Not interested in picking horses for you. That's not what I want to do. And that brings me to the first of seven quick points about this video. This is not a touting video. If you want a touting video, go on one side of this video or the other, and you'll find a hundred of them. Rather, um, I'm doing this to demonstrate the principles of value capping. What are the principles of value capping? I'll explain that in a minute. But it's not about making a pick in every race, Lord knows. If I don't see potential value in a race, I'll tell you that. I can't manufacture value in a race. It's there or it isn't. And by the way, just because you find a value horse uh, or a value bet that the horse is, you know, going off at longer odds than it should, uh, don't tell anyone, but they don't win all the time, yeah? I mean, especially if you're not betting on your quote-unquote top horse, of course, with the top numbers. Problem is the public has gotten really good because some dolts like me 
have put out this information back when we started the first online racing forum back in 94, before there was really an internet. Uh, uh, you know, we started putting out pretty good numbers. Everyone's got good numbers these days. So finding value is a real challenge. But this value capping framework to which I uh, referred is very simple, and yet it's not easy sometimes to implement. The idea is to find horses you like that the public shouldn't, preferably running against vulnerable favorites. You wait for your price, and then you let the bet make you. In other words, you get a felt sense. All right. I use the value capper software, and what that does, it makes pace projections, how the race should shape up, how that compares with how the track has been running. It relies on sophisticated pace ratings. These are not the things that the public has. It's only people have, the software does, but it uses them in a contrarian way. In other words, it doesn't say, well, I'll take the best of the last three lines. No, no, no. It, it treats every horse specifically. It examines form cycles. It makes an odds line. And still, as contrarian as it is, as sophisticated as the numbers are, sometimes it agrees with the public. Because you don't want a, a, a piece of software that always disagrees with the strong horses. You know, a filly like uh, Gamine, I forget if she's a filly or a mare. It's not polite to talk about the lady's age anyway. So Gamine has got to be on top. Y you know, that kind of thing. It can't always be putting uh, unlikely horses on top just because um, you're being contrarian. Number two, I'm making this video days in advance and I don't have scratches, I don't have weather changes. You know, it's Del Mar, weather should be nice, but that can change things, and most importantly, without seeing the board. So I'm gonna tell you, uh, boy, uh, this doesn't look like a great value play, but if I were speculating, I'd need 10 to one, or I'd need 25 to one on the horse. Um, when you see these snapshots of value cap or whatever, bear in mind that any software, any numbers, they are not crystal balls. You can't be 100% certain. Uh, horses are not machines uh, in, in the sense that you can set dials and run them and this number will make this result. As you know, there's a lot of randomness in horse racing. Potential value bets are price dependent. That means if there's no adequate price, there's no bet. There's a race in the undercard, I'm gonna need 10 to one. If I don't get that, I'm not betting, period. But I want to emphasize the fifth point, value doesn't just mean price. Otherwise, you, why bother? You just bet the price horses. Look, there's going to be plenty of price out there on Breeders' Cup Day. But typically, uh, as in, I'm sorry to tell you, as in this weekend, very few solid plays. Now, look, there's a big difference between prime bets, like what I call investment bets, uh, and casual recreational bets. Look, we're human. Um... I'm a racing fan, uh, as well as being someone who, you know, does this for profit, <laughs> you know, but I'm, I'm a racing fan as well, and on these big days, I will allow me, myself some of these recreational bets. But I'll tell you, when it's a rec recreational bet and, you know, not a prime bet, um, the value capper odds line, as I mentioned, is based um, largely, not entirely, but largely on proprietary pace ratings and some other secret sauce, which I'm not going to go into. Horses with no internal fractions get no ratings. And that means that races in which there are many foreign horses, no reported internal fractions, there are many unknowns, and those races will be pass. Okay, I, I can't make numbers out of nothing. And you might say, well, there are some European, some of the, some of the races, they just don't, uh, they don't time the internal fractions. And uh, a big part of the odds line has to do with those, uh, with those ratings. And finally, uh, you hear this every time on a big day, often the value is found in the undercards. Now, again, I don't have all the files because I did this on the Tuesday before, um, before Breeders' Cup, so I don't have all the other 
uh, undercards. But look at even other tracks. I did find one race at Del Mar that might be interesting. So with all of that preamble, let's take a look, a closer look at the 2021 Breeders' Cup. And again, I'm going to go very quickly because I've got a bunch of races and I don't want to keep you here for two hours. The first Breeders' Cup race is Del Mar, November 5th, 2021. Race six, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint. And here's what the value capper screen looks like at the race. I put a big old arrow to show you there are seven unknowns in the race. And this is what we were talking about before. Uh, horses, colts that look like this, that big red square in there, that means there's no, uh, there are no internal fractions, no internal calls. You know, it's one of the morning line favorites, and and this cult is one of seven unknowns. So it's a, it's a very quick pass. Del Mar, race seven on November 5th, the Friday, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Now, here's the, here's the opposite. We almost know, not, not, not know too much, but here's one of those other races that <laughs> probably is not going to produce any value. Um, if you notice, Value Capper in this race puts up the five and six Juju's map and Echo Zulu. You'll also notice that their morning lines are five to two and four to five. Oh, gee, what a great program, Michael. You put up these two obvious favorites. Well, yeah, sometimes in spite of all the efforts to be contrarian, to go back in a horse's form cycle, to use all these sophisticated numbers, still, no matter how you shake it or make it dance, those horses are going to come up, and in this case, these, uh, these fillies. Take a look at their form. And again, if you don't recognize some of these ratings, these uh, this is not just a past performance. This is the past performance from Value Capper. So it's got all the Value Capper ratings and so forth in it. Um, Juju's Map missed its first uh, maiden special. One second time out and then came back and won a grade one race. Two for three lifetime. Echo Zulu won at first asking and then... All it did after that was win two grade ones, the spin away, and the frisette. Yeah, three for three lifetime. These are obvious, obvious fillies. Now, you know, sometimes you'll say, oh, I'll, I'll use them in serial bets like pick threes or whatever. Yeah, that's fine. As far as a, a value bet on these, no. I gave all the other fillies in the race the benefit of the doubt. These are the... These are the quote-unquote, the public has got the same horses, the same fillies that I do. And just, there's no value in the race. So remember, no price, no bet. Uh, the next race is the Breeders' Cup Phillies Turf. It's race eight on Friday at Del Mar, November 5th. And once again, <laughs> we have four unknowns in the race. Now, uh... This is being run at a mile on the turf, but I've got four foreign fillies, no internal fractions, unknowns. I'm sorry to tell you again, this is a pass. The Breeders' Cup Juvenile. This is race nine on Friday. Once again, we have the situation. Done our best. We have looked under rocks in the past performance at the other horses in the race. And what do we come up with? What does Value Capper come up with? The top two morning line favorites in this race, Jack Christopher and Corniche. And this will look familiar. Remember the Echo Zulu <laughs> race, right? Jack Christopher wins at first asking and then goes and wins the champagne. Corniche wins at first asking and then goes and wins the American Pharaoh. I mean, these Colts have the top numbers there's, you know, there's not much to do. Value capper agrees with it. And again, how are you going to make value? And someone said, well, I'm going to go bet one of these bottom horses just so I get a price. Price isn't value, okay? This is the reality of playing this game, especially when you're playing it at a value level. You know, oh, gee, I knew these horses were going to run one, two, or whatever, whatever. That ain't value. That's trying to predict the outcome of a race. And that's another another story. By the way, that's why so many horse players, handicappers, are so frustrated because they're trying to predict and you can't, not with 100% certainty. And okay. So after giving the other Colts every benefit of the doubt, 
Jack Christopher and Cornish uh, value capper agrees with the public. Uh, two for two lifetime <laughs> main special grade one champions. Moving on to the last of the Breeders' Cup races on Friday, November 5th. Uh, race 10, the Juvenile Turf. And once again, we have four unknowns. Now, here I may look at a recreational, not a prime bet. Why isn't it a prime bet? I got four unknowns. Um, there are no internal fractions on them. Uh, two of them, the one Modern Games and the 14 Dubai Legend, uh, are the morning line favorites. So too many unknowns. Now, if I were inclined to make a recreational bet, I'd use the 13 coinage and uh, this horse ran uh, lost to the three Dakota Gold last out after a poor start. And I'd also look at the five slipstream. And I'd need 20 to one to consider betting either or both. If they're both 20 to one and up, I'll bet them both. There's no, no harm in that. And I'll use exotics and I'll put the three in of the exotics. Why? Uh, according to the odds line that Value Capper make, made, uh, the top horse on the line, and by the way, it's a very weak line, starting at seven to one, and then eight to one, or eight to one, nine to one, nine to one. These aren't these aren't strong horses like the other like the other horses that we saw. And um, by the way, I just noticed a typo. The autocorrect, God bless it, made <laughs> made that horse Dubai legend when it's Dubawi le legend. So uh, forgive me. Uh, there's. The top horse had a very uh, hard race last out. Uh, there's some layoffs, there's hard. Uh, there's potential prices on coinage and slipstream. Dakota Gold is coming out of the same race as coinage. Not a prime bet. Not a prime bet, a recreational bet. I take 20 to one and up on coinage and the 13, slipstream the five. I put uh, Dakota Gold in there and some kind of trifecta arrangement. And that's it. But again, with four unknowns, I am not going to make this uh, a, a prime situation. Saturday, November 6th at Del Mar, and the first Breeders' Cup race is race four, the Philly and Mare Sprint. Um, here's the one to which I was referring before, Gamine. Another one of those races where, you know, the obvious very, very strong contender is right there on top. And it's a highly pressured race, seven furlongs. Usually I can find a closer that might be close. But look at Gamine. I mean, she's nine for ten lifetime, four for four at the distance. Uh, the uh, She lost one time in the Oaks uh, back last September. But boy, oh boy. I mean, this is a racehorse, and if you're using software or you're using a method that doesn't at least put Gamin up there as the top uh, top filly in this race, uh, it, it's probably not uh, doing you a lot of good. Now, the question is, do you bet it? Well, you can't bet it. At this, uh, she'll be really odds on. Now, if we go down in the line, if we look at Bella Sophia, oh boy. Well, she's four out of five lifetime. She's one for one at seven furlongs. She just won the a grade two last out. And she, she's the second favorite in the race. See what I mean? Sometimes there's agreement with the public. So the top two fillies, top two morning line favorites, no one's surprised. Gamine's on the top of the gap. You know, no value. The only potential negative I could see is that value capper, well, all the speed in this race projects it as a highly pressured race. That means there should be a lot of pressure in the race. And this would favor a closing horse. Uh, Gamine's wins have almost, oh, almost, without exception, been wire to wire, with one exception. Let's go back and look at her past performances. Last year, in this race, the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint she closed from second to win. Okay, so she can do a little close, but she may not have it all her own way still. 
I don't have I don't have a closer, the potential closer that can compete with her numbers to keep up with it. Yeah, they may close, but they may close from fifth to you know third, <laughs> and I don't think we'll be threatened. So there's no, in my opinion, no value in this race, and it's a pass for me. The next Breeders' Cup race on Saturday, November sixth, is race five, the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. Once again, we have three unknowns. Um, here's something that's interesting. You'll notice some of the other lines started, you know, with lower odds. This line starts at nine to one. There, are, I believe, there are eighteen horses entered in this race. I don't know what it'll be after scratches. If they may go with eighteen, I don't know. Um, some of them may be also eligible. Some of them. This is why I'm telling you, I'm working without scratches. But when you see a line that starts at nine to one, translate that. Translate that from numbers to uh, to English. And what English will tell you is nine to one means if they ran the race ten times, the horse would win once. That's what nine to one means. Okay, nine negative outcomes, one positive outcome out of ten runnings of the race. So, is it solid? Mm, no. However, and once again, there are three unknowns in the race. Not a prime value bet. But there are three horses in the top cluster that I would hold as candidates for recreational bets. The four, Lieutenant Dan, is two for two at the distance. The 14, the critical way, uh, projects to have the early lead. And the eight, Caravel, is four for five at the distance. And... I'd consider a recreational bet of any of those three, the four, the eight, or the 14, are 20 to one and up. And I'd make small exotic bets. I'll include the fulcrum in the race, the three horse and tries and supers. So this is that top cluster. Lieutenant Dan, Critical Way, Caravel, those are potential prices. Uh, I've got Golden Pal, and you'll see it's in the bold there because it's the fulcrum. Uh, this might be a nice little try box. No way is this a is this a prime bet because of the unknowns, because of the weakness of the lines. I don't know. Maybe there'll be a bunch of scratches in the race and it'll clarify. But sitting here right now, this is how I would use value capping principles to analyze this race. Race six on Saturday, November sixth, at Del Mar, the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. Oh boy, here we go again. And again, I, I can't really apologize. I have, don't have any control of whether I will be presented with good value opportunities. Surprise, surprise, life is good is right on top of the line, the four to five morning line favorite. Underneath is the second morning line. Underneath is the third morning line, Silver State and then Ginobili. Now, I... I can't tell you, that this is un, kind of unusual. If I'm looking at claiming races in the middle of the week at parks or Mahoning Valley, uh, you know, you don't see this. A lot of, a lot of fluctuations, very rare that you get, you get this kind of thing. But life is good. Four for five lifetime. Two for two at a mile. Um, the, only, uh, the only race this colt lost uh, was the the Alan Jerkins at Saratoga this summer, and uh, the chart maker said he was ridden overconfidently by Mike Smith, and they changed jockeys to uh, Mr. Ortiz. And what are you going to do? I mean, it's got top numbers, top not any just about any way you look at these numbers. Um, this cult figures to have the lead over Ginobili and increase that lead at the second call. And it's a good thing because all of its wins, and you just come take a look, have been on the lead at both the first and second calls. I refer to this as a need-to-lead horse. Um, it's the obvious horse in the race. It's at the top of my line with the gap. Underneath it, Silver State and Ginobili. You know, Ginobili's got a good record at Del Mar and has an easy wire-to-wire -wire win at uh, Del Mar, but... They both look like they'll be bet. So there's no value in this race. Sorry. And again, you can use this in um, in exotics and so forth. I mean, yeah, the longer prices are Snapper Sinclair and Eight Rings. I just don't see 
uh, enough of a reason to bet against those horses that are so strong at the top. I just and and I think sometimes people will think of it as a picking machine. So they'll say, well, they're your VIP. See at the top there it says VIP value investment potential. I'll just bet the VIPs. Well, you have to pick your spots. It's the reason why many people have had Black Magic software and Value Capra software. And yeah, there have been a few who have won very big um, handicapping contests like the um, National Handicapping Championship with its, whatever it was, three quarters of a million, eight hundred thousand dollar first prize and an Eclipse Award. Um, two out of three years, people using the software. And people say, Michael, why don't you, you know, promote this? And say, well, because it's not the software. I mean, the software is a great tool, but it's not an automatic picker and instant, you know, buckets of money. You have to be good at using your tool, whatever that tool is, a chisel, a paintbrush, a golf club, uh, you know, give me uh, a golf club and give, um, I don't know, you know, name a great guy, Jordan Spieth a golf club, and it could be the exact same golf club. I guarantee you he will he will use it much, much better than I. Um, sorry to digress. Software is just a tool. All right. The, <laughs> the race seven on Saturday, November 6th, the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. Um, mile and three-eighths. This is kind of out of the range for pace handicapping. It's also filled with eight unknowns, six foreign fillies, and two mares with no internal fractions, too many unknowns, pass. I'm not even going to waste your time with this. Now, what is usually my favorite race on Breeders' Cup? The sprint, the Breeders' Cup sprint. This is race eight on Saturday. Ah, oh, gosh. The race comes up with a mixed pro projection. You see the big old blue arrow there at the top, pressured and unpressured? No matter how you bias this race, early, neutral, or late, Still getting Jackie's Warrior, the six to five morning line favorite. Now, looking at her, uh, at his past performance, um, pronouns are so difficult in 2021. Anyway, um, he's two for two at uh, at six furlongs. Uh, it's last five races. Uh, he's won five of them. Uh, last five races, he's run four of them. And a second, they've been grade ones and grade twos. Uh, I, I think where uh, where he lost when, and the Woody Stevens at uh, Belmont this summer, he had to steady at the start and so forth. You know, this is an obvious, obvious cult. Now, I do notice that Value Capper made this an unpressured race, has Jackie's Warrior getting the lead over Dr. Shivel, and then Special Reserve maybe coming up. Um, you know, this is a, here again, judgment call on my part. Won't bet it, won't bet against it, not as a prime bet. And I do notice that there's a lot of horses in those boxes. Okay, well, what that means is, there's a bunch of horses that are going to want the lead. Now, the way AccuPressure works in the Value Capper software is it looks at every line and every horse's past performance to see how much pressure will be there. Maybe the assessment in this race projects the assessment that there won't be much pressure. And Jackie's Warrior may have it all his own way. Here's the thing. Jockeys, trainers, owners, they can also read the past performance. And they can say, hey, don't let this colt get away. If that happens, there may be pressure up front. And here's where we can speculate. So if there is, if I were looking for a recreational bet, I take the two closers. One is mentioned in the acupressure box. That's Lexitonian. I guess not Lexingtonian, Lexitonian. Um, and then there's the eight special reserve, which has shown some closes as well. Uh, special reserve at 10 to 1, Lexitonian at 20 to 1, and we can take a look at the uh, value capper screen on that. 
Lexitonians 20 to 1 morning line. Uh, we think uh, the contention line will be longer than that. Special reserve kind of looks like a mid price, 5 to 1 on, on the value capital line. So that's why I want 100% overlay or 10 to 1. Lexitonian being further down, you know, I'd want 25 to 1, that kind of, that kind of range. But in other words, a long price on Lexitonian. And once again, a recreational play. I wish, I wish there were more here. And when we get to the Breeders' Cup Mile, November 6th, race nine, once again, seven unknowns. Sorry. If you want to look and you want to stop the video and say, well, he's got Mo Forza, got Stormy, In Love, and Consecrate, I'll just box those. Yeah. What about those other seven horses in this race? You don't know what, you know, that's kind of, that's real speculation. This is gambling. And that, you know, it's fine if you want to do It's, you know, it's, your, your coin, <laughs> your choice, but an, a very quick and easy pass. Four, uh, eight foreign colts, no internal fractions. Okay, so the next race is race 10 on Saturday, November 6th, the Breeders' Cup Distaff. And once again, we get a huge 800-pound monster at the top of the line, the mare Latruska. Ah, uh, boy, oh boy. Well, gee, Michael, another genius call. Yeah, I know. What are you going to do? Honestly, used everything we could to get other horses up, uh, other uh, other of the distaff, fillies and mares. Uh, just look at Latriska. Out of her last eight races, she's won seven. They've all been great at stakes. She's four out of five at a mile and an eighth. I mean, this I, I, this is this is a mare that's too short to bet and too strong to bet against. I, I, if I were looking for a flaw, and we go back and look at her recent races, um, they've been wire to wire. And in this race, Private Mission looks like she might be able to get the lead away from Latruska. Um, however, if we, if, we look at the, if we look at the odds lines, you know, Private Mission is probably going to be the third favorite in the race. Uh, if I were looking, if I would say, I, I have to, here would have to be the thinking. Sorry, Latriska is most comfortable on the lead. And as you can see this, I mean, it's not that, you, you know, she's, she wants the lead. Not wants. She's on the lead in, in just about all of her wins that are showing in the past performance. She may have made... Gosh, I don't remember. Last year, a little close. I'm, I'm honestly not remembering. But if she finds herself not on the lead and loses interest, could happen. I'm speculating. I'm not saying it's going to. Once again, as a prime bet, I'm not interested in betting against this mare. Um, if that happens, if uh, Private Mission rests the lead from her and compromises Latruska, I'd be looking at the fillies and mares below it on the line, um, below Latruska, the nine, the two, the seven, and the one. Um, and there are prices there, at least according to the morning line and our contention line. Uh, the nine, as time goes by, is the fulcrum, the two, royal flag, the seven, horologist, and the one, private mission. Do I think that'll happen? No. At a huge, at huge prices on these, you know, uh, all of them being 12 to 20 to 1, that kind of thing. I'll take some, ex you know, trifectas and superfectas. But someone asked me who I, quote, unquote, thought was going to win the race. Well, L Latruska, duh. Okay. But as a prime bet, kind of strong to bet against and uh, no value to bet. Unfortunately, race 11, the Breeders' Cup turf, there are 10 unknowns. Can't get to it. I mean, there are some really fine-looking thoroughbreds in here. But with, with 10 unknowns in the mix, not my cup of tea. Unknowns, pass. The Breeders' Cup Classic. This is an interesting race. Unfortunately, I don't think there's going to be a lot of money here. Why do I say that? Well... Value Capper put Nick's, puts Nick's go on top with a gap. The other um, 
three horses above random of, of the of those three. We've got Essential Quality, second morning line, and we've got Medina Spirit, third morning line. You see those arrows, five to two, three to one, four to one. Basically, we're agreeing with the public. It, here's an interesting thing. Nick's Go uh, projects to have the lead over Medina Spirit. Um, now, if we look at the last Breeders' Cup Classic run at Del Mar, a mile and a quarter, and we look at some of the other mile and a quarter races. I had to go way back. I had to go back to 2016 because they don't run this distance, right, that much at Del Mar. Um, when when the Breeders' Cup was run in 2017, uh, I just 2017 classic, ugh, my memory. I want to say Gun Runner, perhaps. Whoever that lucky horse was, <laughs> wired the field. And if you look at those squares, you see the beaten lengths? Zero, one, one and a half, zero, zero, zero at the first call. And at the second call, zero, point five, point two, zero, zero. This distance at Del Mar, mile and a quarter at Del Mar, favors horses on or very close to the lead. So... In that case, it would favor Nick's go. Again, assuming our projection is correct. And guess what? Nick's go is the morning line favorite. Okay. Uh, we look at Essential Quality and Medina Spirit, the other ones who have strong numbers. They both won at a mile and a quarter. Nick's go uh, hasn't, but projects to have the early lead. Then we've got Hot Rod Charlie, who's not in that top cluster, but is the fulcrum in the race. Decent number. I'm just not seeing an opportunity for a good bet here. Now, if a speed duel develops, like we projected that it might in that other, in that other, in the Latrusca race, I could make a case, I could see the six art collector making a close along with Essential Quality and Hot Ride Charlie. Not a prime bet. I think this is going to go according to, uh, according to the projection. And one of those early horses, probably Nick's go, will take it as long as he can. Uh, if the speed duel develops, and if Art Collector goes off at 15 to one and up, which I don't think he will, I uh, would maybe consider a recreational bet. I'd have to see the board. Um, but there you go, that's the classic. And once again, you know, um, not much to do with a line that looks like that. Remember the first principle of value capping, find, find horses that you like, to that the public shouldn't well the horses that we like are horses that the public should like and they probably will like and both the morning line and our contention line which is our um, very heavily researched uh, estimation of what the public will do with the race and conventional handicapping now I've got a bonus for you for those of you who have stuck around this whole video to hear me yammering on about why I'm not going to be betting these races, why they're passing. Oh, I, I, I hope they're. I, I hope this is valuable to you because for a good player, for a successful player, passing races is very, very important. Now, there's an undercard race that I'm looking at. It's the very first race at Del Mar on this coming Friday, November fifth, twenty twenty one. This is a little allowance race. It's a uh, six furlong. I've got seven horses above random. I've got five horses in a cluster. And one horse just jumped out at me. It's uh, the eight El Diablo Rojo. Value capper makes it seven to one. The contention line, what we think the public will do is 16 to one. The morning line maker makes it 20 to one. Here's some interesting things. Four of the other five horses in that cluster have some what I call anti-value going on, either taking a negative drop in class or are on a layoff. Now, when we look at the pace projection, even though it says unknown, if you look at the top, it says highly pressured and unknown, highly pressured on the positional point of view. But when you put um, velocity in with that, 
uh, it, it can't make a clear projection of the race. I see all those horses in that box and I say, hmm, this race could go late. And if it does, one of the closers is the eight, El Diablo Rojo. And if we look at his past performances, um, he needs to uh, meet the numbers of Silver Moon Road, uh, our number is 162 and a half. And I think the public will look just at the sp speed ratings or whatever they look at, and they, the top three, at least according to my lights, aren't that great because they were on the turf. And it doesn't look like he ran very well on the turf. However, if you go back to his races on the dirt, pretty good. He's one for one at Del Mar. He's one at six furlongs. Um, you know, and... And I think this horse can close into the pace. So I would take this at 10 to 1. And the other thing I would use, let me look at the uh, value capper again. Um, you see the designation of the reversal. In other words, El Diablo Rojo was beaten by the two. I'll stand taller. I believe that I'll stand taller can close a little bit. Uh, I get 10 to 1 on El Diablo Rojo. I'll definitely have uh, an exacta box with the 8 and the 2. And I'll take a straight exacta extra for the reverser to so-called reverse. In other words, the 2 beat him last time, right? The 2 beat the 8 last time, so, oh, well, it's going to beat him again this time. Oh, good. Thank you, Moto. Uh, <laughs> Moto, master of the obvious, right? So um, I reverse, uh, I like to reverse it. I like to emphasize the exacta with the the horse that lost the reversal race last time, um, more on top, because mm, it's going to pay more. Um, do I think this is uh, a certainty, a lock? No, of course not. But this is the kind of value bet that I prefer. This is the kind of situation that I prefer. Not these fancy races with horses coming from all over the planet. Okay, well, that's it for this year's Breeders' Cup. Again, I wish there were more value. I wish there were more opportunities. I wish there were more interesting races um, to, uh, to present to you, but that's what we've got. Best of luck at the Breeders' Cup. I want to thank you so much for spending this time with me. For those of you who um, have our software, participate in the Wizards Forum, thank you so much for your support and your support of each other. Have fun at Breeders' Cup, wait for your prices, and let the bet make you. I'll see you soon.